Turn with me to Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. We've been dealing with uh, Jericho and uh, Joshua and Hebrew history. Today we're going to pick up a, a lesson on um, how to fight your battles. Not that any of you have any. No one here has any battles, I know. But just in case you do or when you do, I want to give you a couple of uh, suggestions on how to fight the battle. Joshua chapter 10. Begin at verse 7. So Joshua set out for Gilgal, his whole army with him, all those tough soldiers. God told him, don't give them a second thought. I've put them under your thumb. Not one of them will stand up to you. Now, that's the Message Bible. Who has a different version or translation? Okay, you do... <coughs> New Living Translation. Would you mind standing up so that the mic will pick it up and le read that, please? With seven, starting with seven. Yes. So Joshua and his entire army, including his best warriors, left Gilgal and set out for Gibeon. Do not be afraid of them, the Lord said to Joshua, for I have given you victory over them. Not a single one of them will be able to stand up to you. Okay, say the last part starting with I. I have. I have given you victory Stop. over them. Stop right there. Stop right there. Thank you. Now your version translation may be something a little different. But if you were here last week, and many of you weren't, shame on you. <laughs> I'm glad you showed up today. I'm just teasing you. What does it say? And in fact, I like that. See, I, I wanted that red because I'm using the message, but I like that better. What does it say? I have given. What did we learn last week in the verb tense, I have given? Yes, Glenn, I hear you thinking it. Speak it. Say it out. Present perfect tense verb, right? We read that last week. Same words, same verb translation in the Hebrew and in the Greek. I have given, which means present perfect tense is a verb such as the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us. Any verb ending in ETH is present perfect tense. So it means it has, it does, and it always will. Anytime you encounter a present perfect tense verb in either the Hebrew or the Greek, it means the same thing. It means past, present, future. So when he says to Joshua, I have given. Now I want you to hold on to that because it becomes a launching pad for what happens in Joshua's life. Last week we left off, as you may remember, that Joshua was, was surrounding Jericho. The walls came down. For those of you who may not have been here or didn't watch YouTube or whatever this week, just a simple reminder. You, you remember by, from Bible history, most of you, there were two concentric walls around the city of Jericho. The outer wall was 30 feet high, at least six or eight feet deep. The inner wall could have been as high as 75 feet and it was 12 feet wide, so they could race double chariots around it. So all I'm simply saying is, this is not some little just go over and blow it down kind of thing. This was the impenetrable wall that no one could bring down. As I mentioned to you also, even if some army or soldiers or somebody got near the wall and started trying to climb the wall, their way of taking them out was to pour boiling hot oil on them. That stopped them. But it didn't stop Jericho. It didn't stop Jericho from the control of Joshua. Not to repeat it, but you know what happened. They walk around six days, once each day. Seventh day, they go around seven times. I didn't say this last week, but it's, it bears mentioning today because I have a bunch of intellectuals here today. I can see that. So uh, for those of you who 
happen to encounter somebody or know somebody that has trichodecophobia, then you tell them they need to march around the walls of Jericho. Trichodecophobia is a fear of 13. They won't stay on the 13th floor, room 13, anything to do with 13, not on their license plate. That's called trichodecophobia. So it was good in the case of Joshua because it brought the walls down. Actually, we remember, do you remember, seven is the number of what? Completion, thank you. So number of completion, six days around. On the seventh, we're to rest. That's why you're here. This is spiritual rest for you. On the seventh day for them, they went around seven times, and God said, complete, the job's done. Down the walls come. Oh, yeah, they did give a shout. If you weren't here last week, you should have heard this place like a bunch of holy rollers. <laughs> you would not have thought this was a Methodist church. I'm not sure it is a Methodist church, but it's, anyway. It's a weird collection of a whole lot of whatevers, but we're here. But the walls came down. It didn't come down because they shouted. It came down because they obeyed. Now, I have two questions for you today. We're going to move through the next three or four chapters over ultimately into chapter 10, which is where we read today. And I'm just going to highlight from Hebrew history how we get from chapter 6 and 7 to over to chapter 10. And there are two questions that arise. Number one, what is your AI? And that's real simple. AI, two alphabetical letters next to each other. It was a city. It was a city in Canaan. The Canaanites controlled it. But God wanted Joshua and the Israelites to possess it. So I have a question for you. What is your AI? And the second question is, do you have a Gilgal? G-I-L-G-A-L. Gilgal. Okay, got it? Now if you need four words, I'll give them to you. Coalition. Catastrophe. Celestial conquest and coronation. After the Battle of Jericho, they went back home. Everything was cool. By the way, let me, let me give you just a, a, a this will, I think, help to enlarge your understanding a little bit, to visualization. If I had a big map up here of Israel or of Canaan and the Promised Land as it was in its day, let me give you a visual comparison. Let's call it Delmarva, okay? This is, this is Canaan, the Promised Land, but let's call it Delmarva, okay? Route 13 from Newcastle to Salisbury is the Jordan River. Follow me? From Newcastle to Salisbury, the Jordan River. So everything east is, is where Jerusalem and, or yes, Jerusalem and uh, Jericho was to the west, but where Joshua camped out because everything to the west of Route 13, the Jordan River, including Harton, <laughs> everything west was under the control of five different Canaanite kings all the way to the Chesapeake Bay. And it was unlike Delmarva, it was mountainous. Follow me? Have I lost you yet? Don't you love this geographical lesson? Go home and teach your grandchildren this. They don't get this in school. You gotta come to church to get this. But I'm just trying visualization, okay? And the reason is because there was one little town just west of Harton called Denton. Now, some, of you haven't even, some of you haven't even smiled yet. Are you awake? I'm coming back there and get you if you don't smile soon. I'm just trying to illustrate something to you. So let's call it Denton. This is AI, the little town of AI. Small army, nothing, no, no threat to, to Joshua and Jericho and all that. It's, but they heard about the conquest, and so they figured, hey, these guys are laying low. They're tired. They've been to battle. So they decide they're going to they're gonna war against Joshua and the Israelites. Well, somebody gets on their cell phone, and they call Joshua. And they say, hey, the people of Ai 
are coming to get you. He says, ah, piece of cake. He calls together a couple thousand. He says, hey, okay, guy, go up there to AI over there in Denton, you know, a little town over there. They think they're big stuff. Go over there and wipe them out. Are you still with me? So he sends a few thousand soldiers over there. They get blown out. They get wiped out. They get humiliated. Stay with me. They come back with their heads between their legs, whipped like puppy dogs. And they look at Joshua and they say, wait a minute. We thought God was on our side. We thought God said, he'll give us all this land. God spoke to Joshua and said, no, no. See, son, there's a problem. There's sin in the camp. See, where there's sin in the camp, God can't work. Let me say it to you again. Where there's sin in the camp, now, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking individualistically this morning. This is for every person here and on that YouTube that will watch this week. Sin and God do not coexist. Holiness and sin do not coexist. One of the signs of the end times, I just I'm, I'm feel impressed to say this to all of us today because I, it starts right here. So every time a pastor or someone points at you like that, there's three, four actually coming back here. Accountability starts here. But we've got, we've got far too many pulpits today being filled by wolves in sheep's clothing. Amen. Amen. See, there's sin in the camp, and God can't bless. They don't understand the freedom that flowed in this place this morning singing How Firm a Foundation. There was no, I, I can tell you right here, from this, right here on this front row, there wasn't any resistance feeling up here. There was nothing but praise up here, coming from the back to the front. But where there's sin in the camp, God can't work. See, we automatically cut off the flow of the Spirit. And there was sin in the camp. And God spoke to Joshua and said, Son, you need to bring all the tribes together, one by one. Now, there were two million people, roughly, that had crossed into the promised land. That's a lot of tribes. I don't know how long it took him, but he called them in front of him one by one by one. He finally got down to a tribe with a person whose family was the guilty party, and the man's name was Achan, A-C-H-A-N. Because when he came and stood before Joshua, and God spoke to him and said, this is your man. He said, Achan, what have you done? He said, sir, I, just, I thought I was just being innocent. He said, when we went to Ai, no, when, when we went to battle in Jericho, let me back up. When we went to battle in Jericho, and he said, you told us not to take anything. He said, I, watch, watch the progression. He said, I looked I desired and I took. He took silver and gold chalices that belonged to the temple. They were God's, not man's. They were holy. They were sacred. They were set apart. And he snuck them in his duffel bag, took them back to his tent, and buried them in his tent. And when he came to confess, and he said, I, well, listen, notice the progression. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. I looked, I desired, I took. That's Satan. Starts with the eye. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Satan will lie to you. He'll get you to compare with somebody else and say, God doesn't love you because look what you're going through. Look at that person that doesn't even name the name of Jesus and their, their bills are all paid. They're driving a new car. They're living in a new house. They just got a promotion at work and you got fired. 
You don't even have insurance to cover your hospital bills. Oh, believe me, there's some people here this, today, they've been through some battles this week. I happen to know. They've been through some battles this week. And I can guarantee you one of the things Satan has said is, listen, that's what you get for putting God first because he doesn't care about you. He's not going to take care of you. Why don't you do it my way? I'll give you all of this stuff. By the way, didn't he try that with Jesus? If he tried it with Jesus, he's certainly going to try it with us. He took Jesus up on the mountain and said, I'll give you all these kingdoms. Well, first of all, he's being a little presumptuous because Jesus made them. They belong to him anyway. But it was the desire to get him to yield his will. So back at Ai, when Joshua finds out that it's Achan, he says, go to his tent. And his men that went, dug a hole, knew where the dirt was, had been stirred, pulled it out and found it, brought him back. Now, this is where it's hard for us to deal with it, but I can tell you, the word's very clear. He said, your life for what you did. See, church, this is hard for us to grasp sometimes. I, I know we struggle with this kind of thing, but there's a price to pay for sin. See, ultimately, the price for sin is death. There are people, some of you have people, perhaps even in your family right now, that are making unwise decisions that think they're in charge of their life. They're not. Let me tell you something. If God is not in control, Satan's going to tempt you, trap you, and snap the trap on you and take you out. And ultimately, he's going to take you to hell. Because the wages of sin is death. That's kind of heavy. I know. It's a little heavy. So let's get to the good part. Well, let me ask you again. Remember the little word. It's easy to remember. Just two letters. A-I. A-I is where there was accountability. AI is where Achan had to own up to his sin. So I'm going to ask you again, you, you have an AI in your life? Is there a hidden sin that you think you've covered up? It may have been yesterday, it may have been 20 years ago, but you've covered it up and you thought it was forgotten. No, God knows. God keeps good records. And every sin, oh, boy, it's... Mm. I say this with a heart of, that, that's broken. Every sin that's not cleansed by the blood is going to be accounted for in the judgment. Now let me, let's, let's run the script, okay? Let's jump ahead. Ai, Denton, is taken out. Then Joshua hears there are five kings. Ken Island, St. Michael's, Easton, Cambridge, Vienna. There's five kings, and they're on the western. Again, I'm thinking, okay, you got my. We're back on Delmarva, right? And we're on the west side of the Jordan River. The difference is there's no mountains between here and the Chesapeake Bay, but pretend there is, because there, there was up to the Mediterranean Sea, which was the westernmost point in the Promised Land. And five kings got together and said, listen, we can't let that guy take control of all of our land. So they co-aligned. They formed a coalition. Just like we're seeing in the Ukraine today. They formed a coalition, only in this case, it was for evil, not for good. They said, we can't let, Jer we can't let Jericho and Joshua run this whole hold Delmar of a coast. We can't let him take all of the promised land, so we're going to go get him. Again, somebody picks up their cell phone and calls Joshua. You, you all haven't gotten it yet. So he sent him an email, okay? 
If that makes you feel better, so be it. They got a message to him. Listen, five kings, I won't go through the names of the five cities, but they're in Joshua, in, in, in Joshua chapter 9, 10, and 11. And so they, they align themselves, and they're going to they're gonna wipe him out. He gets word of it. Now, remember, he's learned a lesson from Ai. Don't send just a couple thousand, because you're going to get defeated. Don't underestimate, hear this, don't underestimate the enemy. I didn't say give Satan praise, but let me tell you something. Don't underestimate him. If you love Jesus today and you're trying to put God first in your life, if you haven't had a battle this past week, you got one coming this week. Because he's not going to let you sit still and have a good time and fold your arms and fly off to heaven in a merry cloud of glory. He ain't going to do that because he's coming back. Jesus is coming to take us home and Satan knows it and he doesn't want you going to heaven. So he's going to fight you tooth and nail to get you to take you under. But you don't have to go under because God is in control. He is Lord over all. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says to Joshua, we got a plan, son. Here's the plan. Get your troops together. Now they were tired from battle. But he said, get them ready and take them at night. And go up into the hill country. He did it. He surprised them. He, he did a reversal and came from behind and surrounded them up on the top of the mountain and started driving them down into the valley. Took him all day. Are you still with me? Took them all day. About dusk, what would be like for us right now, six o'clock. Sun started setting. See the moon just starting to shine a little bit. And Joshua said, Lord, we're not finished with the battle yet. What are we going to do? He said, son, real simple. You just pray. And son, here's what you're going to pray. Sun, stand still. Moon, stay in Ajalon. A real simple prayer. It takes no faith to pray that kind of prayer, right? Anybody pray a prayer like that? Sun, stand still. Moon, stay in Ajalon, right where you are. Why? Two reasons. One, so they could have enough daylight to finish the job. Now for us, that daylight would amount to 12 hours, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. By the way, if you doubt the Word of God and you think that intelligent people today, this study has been done even by places like the University of Maryland. Astrophysicists have studied this and they have found the missing 12 hours that they could not account for right here in this passage. Woo! <laughs> Take that, devil! When the world affirms God's word is true, then we ought to shout about it. Because God did it. The sun stood still, and the moon stayed in an orbit. And for 12 hours more of daylight, Joshua and his troops were able to fight and take out five kings and five cities. Oh, I just have to give you one more thing. Remember AI? Well, there's also Gilgal. G-I-L-G-A-L. -L, Gilgal. See, Gilgal was their home. Oh, by the way, I have to sneak this in before I close. You know, when these five kings realized they were being defeated, they went and hid in a cave. And they emailed Joshua again. Since you like that, we'll do it that way. And they said, the five kings are hiding in a cave. He said, oh, great. Go put big stones in front of it. In other words, lock them in. When we finish the battle, we'll finish them off. 
So when the battle was over, he sends his troops over to roll the stones back and bring the five kings out and bring them back to Gilgal. Now, the importance of Gilgal is Gilgal is home. Gilgal is where all of the soldiers who came into the promised land who had not been circumcised, their fathers had, but after the 40-year trek around wilderness land, they all died off. So the young boys that were born had not been circumcised. Now, I know we don't like to talk about this, but I simply want to tell you, it's emblematic and prophetic or proto-utterance of the cross and the blood. The blood sacrifice was made at Gilgal, so Gilgal was Calvary to them. It's where they came home, where there was cleansing, where there was forgiveness, where there was blood that had been shed for the glory of God and for purification. Do you get it? So he goes and gets the five kings, and he brings them back to Gilgal. And here, I love this. I, I mean, I, I'm not a vicious kind of guy. I really am meek and mild. Ask my brother. <laughs> And my spiritual gift is mercy, which means I'm empathetic. I don't like to hurt anybody's feelings. So it's hard for me to say this to you, but old Joshua, he was a seasoned veteran. He brings all five kings back and he says, put them on the ground. <laughs> watch, watch, look at the prophetic utterance of this. This is prototypical of what happened to Jesus. Remember they were in a tomb, stone rolled in front of it. They come out and they offer there before Joshua a blood sacrifice, which is their life, because he said, go over to each one of them and put your foot on their neck. That's what you need to do to Satan today. Stomp the tar out of him. Why are you letting Satan destroy your faith in Jesus? Why are you letting Satan have a victory in your life? Get him under your feet. That's where he belongs. Amen. He has no power over you. If you're a child of God, plead the blood, step on his neck, and let him die. Amen. <laughs> That's what Joshua told him to do. Step on their neck. And then he speared them with his sword. And then he impaled all five of them on five different trees. Does anybody see the parallelism? Blood, tree, Calvary, forgiveness, victory over the enemy, the cross. There it is. <laughs> it's all in Joshua. You have an AI in your life? Have secret sin? Never been forgiven? You just let it linger? You tried to press it down and forget it? God says, no, don't do that. I want to deal with it. I know. And I want to remind you that I know. But I want to take you to Gilgal. Don't live in AI. Come to Gilgal. And let the blood cleanse every sin. Because then I can use you in battle. No matter what the battle is. Your strength is not in your ability. It's in God's ability. So the question comes. How big is your God? <laughs> I love it. Let me close with this. I said David Jeremiah wasn't here today, but he did come. He showed up. Well, he wrote me a note. I love this quote from David Jeremiah. The Christian life can be reduced to one very simple guideline. Whatever God says, do it. Amen. <laughs> now, there's a smart man. There's a man of God right there. That summarizes everything I've said in the last 35 minutes right there. 
The Christian life can be reduced to one very simple guideline. Whatever God says, do it. You can't be defeated. You're guaranteed. Lord, how great is our God. How awesome is our God. How wonderful it is to know the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the creator of the universe, the God who right now, all over this globe, is in control. You made it all. You breathed it into existence. Oh, our hearts are heavy for what we see going on in the European continents and in the Russian conflicts and the demented mind of a, a man that has to be possessed. Lord, all we can pray is deliver your people. I've heard them this week. I've heard them testify. If they don't make it to Poland or somewhere else, if their life is taken, they know where they're going. We're so blessed here. We're spoiled rotten. We take our freedoms for granted. Freedom in this nation and our freedom to come to church today. God, forgive us. Let the Holy Spirit settle on us as we break bread together. It just seems so appropriate as I've talked about Calvary this morning and the sacrifice that you made. We celebrate that now. We celebrate the broken body and the shed blood. And Lord, if there's an AI in our life, cleanse it. Help us to confess it and let God take over. Oh, Jesus, my heart's full today. It's great to see a church full of loving brothers and sisters. But oh, this is just, this is just a thumbnail sketch, a drop in the bucket to what it's going to be one day soon because the trumpet's going to sound and the dead are going to be raised and we're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever forever always be with the Lord. Thanks be unto God. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Take your little cup, please. Peel that little top back and take the little bread loafer wafer off. Jesus said at the Last Supper, do this in remembrance of me. So you just take that little wafer and, and break it. Put it in your mouth and remember, his body was broken for you. Peel the cup back. Take that little cup, represents the blood. Without the blood, there is no remission of sin. But when you put everything under the blood, everything is forgiven. Right to this very second. If Satan reminds you when you walk out the door and get in your car, something in your past, you remind him of his future and yours. He is as hell and yours is heaven. <laughs> Drink ye all of it. Can I just say that to you again? When Satan comes at you this week, remind him of your future and his. His future is hell. Yours is heaven. You've been washed by the blood. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb. My heart sings His Praise again, oh hallelujah, praise the Lamb. Let's stand and honor him as we sing that again. 
fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest with us all and abide with us till Jesus calls us home may we be found faithful always coming back to the cross and declaring our victory through the risen Lord hallelujah to God be glory and honor now and forevermore Amen.